All right. Um, Moby Diz, Privet, Volker. Volker, welcome back. Good to see you again. Gabriella is here. Naga. Hello, hello, folks. Polseneha. Akmal. Sandeep. Welcome, folks. So you might have noticed, folks, that I have the same thumbnail and the same name as last week's stream. But this one is a little bit different today because today I've got my buddy here, my friend who is going to join me because he has worked with Go before, unlike myself. So this might go smoothly or it might not go smoothly. But we're doing something a little bit different today as well. We're going to be not only doing the benchmark test, uh, that was recommended, but also we're going to be building Hugo, and we're going to be doing this. We're try. Yeah, we're going to try to do it. <laughs> we're going to be doing this on the M1 machine and on the Intel machine and see how things go. So I'm going to introduce Nick here. His name is Nick Raboy. Um, he's a developer advocate of modern web and mobile development technologies. He's got hands-on experience. He's a programmer. He's, he does JavaScript, Golang, and Java. He worked with Angular, Vue, NativeScript, and Unity. Unity is another popular request I get on this channel a lot. I've been doing so much Unity uh, this year. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. <laughs> we might have to do another stream for that then. Yeah. And uh, he runs a local um, Tracy developer meetup in Tracy, California. Anybody from California, give a shout out to Nick. And uh, yeah, welcome, Nick. Welcome to the show. Howdy. Good to be here. All right. So uh, this is great. We're getting some people showing up. Ramon, Akmal. Oh, my video is super washed out in Zoom. Uh, sorry about that. We are still it's all good. We are still working out some of the uh, some of the kinks. We're learning. So and it yeah. looks like they're. Do I have a super huge lag as well, it looks like, almost? Uh, we, If you're watching yourself in YouTube, don't, yeah. because that one is very much delayed. That one has a probably a 10-second delay. No, not delayed, delay. but lag. Uh, there is, yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah, there is a little bit of a lag. stop watching myself. <laughs> yeah, don't watch yourself. <laughs> you're, it's just going to confuse you. Thank you, Shyam. That's awesome. Uh, today is my birthday, wow. so my gift to you. Thank you, and happy birthday. That is awesome. Appreciate that. Appreciate you folks. Um, so yeah, like I said, we're going to be doing a build in Go today, and we're going to be doing a build of Hugo. And Hugo is a, uh, a website builder, and I think Nick has worked with it. He can probably fill you in a little bit. Do you want to talk a little bit about yourself, introduce yourself if I missed anything, and talk about Hugo? Yeah, for sure. And I think we're getting reports that there is video lag as well. Um, so it may not be my imagination. Yeah. But Sorry about uh, that, folks. Yeah, it's all good. We're learning. Uh, so yeah, my name is Nick Raboy. I'm over here in Tracy, California. And I use Hugo, which is a static website generator for pretty much all of my projects. Uh, so I run a blog called The Polyglot Developer, so the polyglotdeveloper.com, uh, which is actually a Hugo static website. Uh, TracyDevs.com, uh, so the Tracy Developer Meetup Hugo. My own personal website is uh, is a Hugo site. Um, it's it's pretty powerful stuff. It's actually a tool written in, in Go. Um, and so you, you write in, in Markdown and then you basically build it to HTML and JavaScript and all that good stuff using Hugo. Um, and you have a, a bleeding fast uh, website. And it's kind of like Jekyll, kind of like um, Eleventy, but uh, the, the, the Go flavor of things for, for speed. Yeah, um, so f from what I've seen so far, Go is pretty darn fast, a lot faster than, let's say, uh, some of the other sites I've used to build static sites. I'm not going to name any, but, you know, seems pretty fast, yeah. and I'm actually curious to try it myself. Maybe I'll use it for some of my projects. Yeah, there's a lot of debates. Uh, people will, will debate whether uh, which is faster, Hugo or Rust. Um, or even just using vanilla C++ and C. Um, so it's all up in the air on those. Those are kind of the ones that kind of are always talked about together. Yeah, yeah. And I see uh, Lucas showed up. In fact, I have this little comment from Lucas here. 
from oh, last week. Um, he is the one that requested I do a Golang speed comparison in the first place, and he gave me this uh, golang.org slash x slash benchmarks URL to go to to do the benchmarks. So that's what we're actually going to start with today. Um, now I just wanted to introduce you to my setup here. We have the MacBook M1, MacBook Air M1 here. All right, and you can see, you can tell by the background. The background is going to be that colorful background, and then we have the Intel MacBook Pro. This is the dark background. So here are both of them: MacBook Air, MacBook Pro. And this is the Core i9, 64 gigabyte RAM machine. So pretty wow. beefy. And this one is a 16 gigabyte RAM machine. Not so beefy. That like half the price too? This was 1200 bucks, believe it or not. Yeah. And this one was almost $4,000. Wow. Yeah, yeah. This is gonna be an interesting test then if uh, the M1 outperforms that, right? Well, yeah, I mean, some of my tests, the M1 has been killing it, but some of them not. You know, you'd be surprised. And uh, from last week, Go doesn't seem to have a much of an advantage on the M1. Really? We're going to see some tests today, and I'm really curious about that Hugo yeah. build. So we'll see about that. Yeah. There's a question coming in from Akmal. Um, what are the advantages of Go versus uh, some of the other languages out there? Um, so it, it depends on what you're comparing against. So Go is not an interpreted language. So you don't have to have any kind of JVM or you don't have to have Node. You don't, there's no underlying interpreter. Um, so it compiles to machine code uh, and machine code is always gonna give you the best performance. Um, one thing that Go does better than C++, um, and I, again, this is all opinion and uh, it's highly debatable is concurrency so go kind of is better suited for the modern development needs so um it's great for networking code online code uh, just general concurrency related things threading things like that um, and the learning curve is actually quite small too um, so i was doing node.js for a very long time and um, now i do mostly go when i do web and uh, just general development outside of unity um, so it, the learning curve is, is not so bad if you're looking to pick it up, and it's and it's super desirable right now. So, ton ton of back end uh, technologies are using Go. So, if you know Go, um, you're you're going to be more desirable in the job market as well. Yeah, well said, well said. And uh, somebody asked about Erlang versus Go. I don't know if you have any experience in Erlang. I don't. Um, I don't have any experience in Erlang. Uh, is go more for the front end or the back end? It's uh, it's the back end. Um, I I don't know. There's always talks and discussions about is it is it gonna come to like replace uh, Java for Android and things like that. I don't think it will. Uh, so back end, uh, not not just back end too. It's for like uh, a lot of IoT embedded devices, things like that. Really? Wow. Uh, yeah, because go you to to cross compile and go. It's incredibly simple um, versus if you were to, to go to C++, you would need a whole uh, tool chain uh, set up to, to cross compile, uh, whereas Go just natively supports all of these processor architectures. So it's kind of so, like Rust uh, in a way then. Yes, Go and Rust are very heavily compared against each other. Um, and they're, from what I understand, they're very different. Uh, I don't know any Rust, uh, but they are both very popular. Okay. If there's any Rust fans out there in the chat, hit us up. I'd like to know uh, what you think about that if you've done the comparisons. So um, let's uh, let's kick things off, shall we? Let's uh, yeah see what we're working with. And I'm going to start with a benchmark again because uh, there are a couple of um, flags that I didn't set last time, so I'd like to try those out. And the benchmark is actually located here. You can go to you can go straight to golang.org slash x slash benchmarks, which will redirect you to this page. And you can open up the GitHub repository for that. And this will give you the instructions. Um, you can download the code, which is what I've done here. And here are the benchmark folders. Each one of these folders 
is a test in its own. So garbage is a test, JSON is a test, HTTP is a test. Uh, I'm gonna stick with one test today and that's gonna be JSON on both machines. Uh, and I've already built it. So I've built it using the local version of Go, which I've installed here. I didn't map uh, my executable. That's why I'm giving it the full path. And as you can see, I'm running Go 1.16.4 and the ARM64 version. Uh, switching over this to- This is your M1 you said or your- uh, This is the M1 machine, yeah. Got it. Uh, switching over to the Intel box. Let's take a look at Go version here. And this is the AMD 64 version. Hopefully everybody can see that. Might be a little small. So I have a question for you then, because this is, I don't have an M1. I don't, I know very little of them. Mm -hmm. So both the M1 and the Intel both run AMD 64 applications? So the M1 can run AMD 64 applications under Rosetta. All right. I've actually done this in the last stream. I've installed Go, the, six, the AMD 64 version of Go itself, and did a build with All that right. um, under Rosetta. So that executes fine. It executes yeah. under a different architecture, but the one I have here, this one executes under Apple architecture, and we're gonna see that as well. So it was Darwin versus, what was the other one? Oh, so, ARM, ARM64? Yeah, I'm gonna show it to you. Right. Uh, I don't know if I can do a side-by-side. -side. This is too far away. I, so here's, yeah, here's you know, the M1, Darwin yeah. slash ARM64, and here yeah. is the Intel, All Darwin right. slash AMD64. Yeah, I just misread it. I, I thought they both said AMD64, but one was ARM. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so let's see. This is where we're starting, basically, is the starting point. Let's kick things off, and I'm gonna go to the JSON folder here. And uh, I already built this. Now, in order to build this, and thanks to Nick, who actually uh, gave me a hint on how to do this, you just say, go build. And if you've switched the architecture, then this will rebuild it in the current architecture. So there is the executable right there, JSON. In order to run it, I just run JSON like that. So what I'm gonna do is actually time it. And I'm gonna pass a flag in here. Let's uh, let's take a look at the available flag so everybody knows. I'm gonna run help, oops. Uh, JSON, dash dash help. Okay, so we have benchmark duration, which is the one I wanna to try today, but there's also benchmark, uh, bench num int. So it's gonna iterate it several times. The default is one. One is gonna be enough for us because we're just trying to do uh, a little bit of a test here and not take a crazy long time. Sure. And let's go and do that. So execute JSON. I'm gonna time it, forgot to do that. JSON, bench time. And let's go for um, 10 seconds here. All right. So when you do that, does your machine make noises like it's gonna take off? Uh, so that's a good question. This one, the M1 does not, it does not even have a fan in it. All right, wow. so it's not gonna make any noise at all. This one, the Intel box, is going to sound like it's a jet engine taking off from the airplane. Like ripping off the airplane basically and falling yeah. down into somebody's house. Hopefully that doesn't happen. I wonder anyway. how it's able to dissipate that heat like that on the M1 without a fan. Yeah, that's a very good question. I think it just, uh, it dissipates it. <laughs> I don't know how, but it does it. It's pretty amazing. This dissipates it in the form of a fire on, in your office, right? <laughs> no, but my office does get pretty warm, I gotta say. And you, you're probably gonna hear this. You're gonna hear this. When I start running it, it's gonna get really noisy in here. So let's go with time, JSON, and that was bench time, 10 seconds. All right, so I got both of these set up and yeah. I'm gonna run these and we'll see what happens. And just to give you a little bit of a detail here, 
this is going one iteration, 100, and then 5,000. And then same thing is happening here as well. Alex, we're getting a request from Rishi uh, for you to open up the activity monitor so that way you can uh, watch it there as well. Very good point. Here is the activity monitor, and is, you'll is see it. Is that able to be zoomed in? I don't think so. That's fine. We'll use our imagination a little bit. <laughs> There's Jason. You can see that it's taken up most of the CPU. Yeah, I don't think I can zoom this in, unfortunately. And this test is only a CPU test and not a RAM uh, or disk test, or is it all? This is a CPU only test. All right. Um, actually, you know what? Let's take a look. Um, I know a lot of the tests I do are CPU based tests. I'm not 100% actually, now that I think of it, about this one and whether this, oh, you can hear that, wow. Here we go, the description of that. Yeah. Uh, it's basically marshals and unmarshals a two megabyte JSON string. Got it. So this is what it's doing and I'm not 100% on what it's testing. Uh, it's probably testing um, how fast it can process the difference uh, between converting it from a uh, Go object yeah. uh, to uh, to a, just a, a centered string, mm -hmm. which is a common operation for Go. I mean, I've had to marshal my data plenty of times. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, so that's where we are, folks. And let's take a look at the results. And you'll see that the results are actually pretty consistent. So we got 29 seconds here total on the M1 and 29 seconds on the Intel box. So um, that could have something to do with the fact that I passed in the benchmark bench time 10 seconds. I don't know why it's coming out to 29 or where that 10 is actually represented in this time string but we're trying to find the number of operations right here so that's what's going to give us the clue of which one did more operations in that time sure so let's see let's see if anybody in the chat has any ideas about this lucas cpu plus cache okay that's interesting so what this is testing is cpu plus cache and yeah, Fei Fei says, wow, you can hear the fan. Absolutely, this is pretty loud. Are both Macs running the same version of Mac OS? Both on uh, Big Sur, same exact version of Big Sur. Absolutely. So uh, what about this number right here? What does this say? I'm not familiar with this test, so it's going to be a little bit of a uh, poking in the dark here, but that's okay, right? That's what these live streams are for. Was that like nanosecond per operation? <laughs> That's a good question. I don't know. I'm just guessing. I don't. I. I. I've personally never run a benchmark test before, so uh, maybe uh, as uh, a baseline, we should just run this without the bench time. Oh, I was right. Nan nanoseconds per operation. <laughs> yeah. Good call then. Yeah, that's what <laughs> Lucas says. I'll take it. So that nanoseconds per operation might give us an idea of uh, which machine is actually executing this faster. But I still want to run the uh, the test without the time flag and see what where we are at there as well. And then we'll do a comparison. Okay, so here we are. This is 12 seconds total on the M1. And we got 11.5 yep. here, so very close, very close. And as far as the nanoseconds per operation from our previous test, we got, what is that, 5.58 uh, million? Yeah. And on the M1, 5.74 million. If I'm understanding correctly, though, from Lucas, it looks like that uh, 29 number and the 12 number is the number that we care about. But uh, maybe I'm wrong. Well, if, what about the bench time? So if you're specifying, let's run this for 10 seconds, you know, it's going to take 10 seconds, right? The total? Yeah. 
so I, I don't know <laughs> so that's the that's the the benchmark test and if anybody wants to see any other benchmark tests related to this JSON or any other flag let us know but we're gonna move on to Hugo Wait. let's take a look what is that hugo.com or is it go hugo.com go hugo.io oh that io yeah, I've, I've, I've messed that up like a million times as well so no worries <laughs> all right folks for those of you that are not familiar with hugo this is a static site generator that we're going to build and we're going to see how long it takes to build so we're going to go to github right and yeah uh you've done this before so what do, what do we do here yeah i, I contributed to this like uh a year or so ago um and if i recall it took like a few minutes to build um so it wasn't fast i mean i i don't have the greatest of computers over here um so this this would probably be a good test um so you're looking for what do we want to do how about we first start by cloning it let's, let's clone this there. let's clone it yeah so clone that and i'm gonna back out of here all right I'm going to do the same thing over here silently. Uh, so we're getting we're getting messages in the chat telling us that we want to, we definitely want to check the ops. Um, ops. Okay. Yeah. Let's check the ops. So um, where's the ops? So are we referring to the nanoseconds per op, or are we looking for uh, the? There's a few others in there as well. There's this, there's allocations per operation, and then there's bytes allocated per op. And yeah, hmm. thanks for bearing with us, everyone, because we're, I think we're both pretty new to the benchmarking scene. Yeah, yeah, I'm poking around here. Thanks, everybody, for your help. So if you want to, folks, take the screenshot of this and... Uh, let us know if you find any information on that. That would be really cool. <laughs> uh, we're, we're hearing from Lucas. Lucas is saying that uh, it's it's pretty slow for Go standards. I'm assuming uh, this is maybe in reference to the to the M1. Maybe I'm. Is it the M1 that's slow? I mean, they're showing yep, which... relatively similar results here, and it may be that. Yeah. Um, because I slowed down, well, I'm using only the eight processors on my Intel machine. I should probably mention that. So I set this flag last time we did a live stream. I exported go max prox equals eight. Now by default, I think that's 16 on the Intel box. So I did limit it so that they run the same um, number of iterations for the benchmark. So it could be faster if I set that back to 16. And in fact, I'll just do that now and we'll do a test again. Sure. Were you typing somewhere? I think you forgot to switch. No, I, 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 uh, I just ran it by itself without the switch right now. And then I'm going to run it with the switch. So it's still 11 seconds. No, I mean, I, I as far as your screen goes, I think uh, oh. I didn't see any. <laughs> I think you're on the wrong screen. <laughs> My bad. Okay, so I did this. Export go max prox equals 16 uh, before I had it set to 8. So now it's yeah. 16. There's, which, from my understanding, from our last stream, uh, and guys in the chat, let me know, um, we did this change so that they'd run the same number of iterations on both machines. And that's because the M1 MacBook Air only has 8 processors, whereas the Intel box... Um, has 16 cores. All right, so let's do this benchmark 10 second thing again, just to get an idea of the time there. And it was 29 last time. Let's see what it is this time. What did you run it for, 10 seconds? Yeah. Alexander Jenkins, it's all right if you're late to the party. We're, the party's just started. <laughs> all right 29 so we're still about the same folks all right this number is a little bit different five five point six million nanoseconds per operation versus what was the what was it before it was 5.7 now it's 5.6 
doesn't seem like it changed that much. Not that much, right? Maybe, not that much. Maybe that's a significant number. I don't know. I, it feels like it isn't. <laughs> oh, you can hear a significant amount of hum, though, right? Uh, on my end, no, because you've got me hooked up to a different microphone. But oh, uh, I heard in the chat people are saying, yeah, they can uh, they can hear some jet engines taking off in your in your office. Well, folks, didn't you know we're doing this live show from an airplane today? I don't know if you all <laughs> aware of this. First time streaming from the airplane over here. <laughs> all right, so we've got Hugo. Let's go there, and we're on to the next yeah. step. So here we are. This might be a stupid question right here, and I just thought of it. How are, where where are you broadcasting this video from? It's not being broadcast from one of those laptops, right? No. All right. Perfect. No. <laughs> Different computer, third computer, then, right? Uh, it's actually coming from um, this box right here, which is a separate dedicated box for streaming. Got it. Yeah. So that's that's separate. All right, we're back here. We're on Hugo now. Let's go back to the instructions and see what's happening. So you got the clone? I did. I cloned it. Sweet. So then you probably want to navigate into that uh, Hugo directory uh, from your command line. All right, I did. I'm on there. And we're, what are we going to do? Just do uh, go install? Yeah. You, you can do the go install. Um, I think you can probably get away with just saying go build uh, because it's as far as I can tell, it's just going to look at the the uh, the package main and then the main function. Uh, so now, for try, those of you that don't first. know, and that includes me, by the way, folks, what's the difference between go install and go build? <laughs> Putting you on the spot, Nick. Anybody know? Oh, oh you're talking about you're ta you're asking me. Uh, I thought uh, you were asking them. I'm asking you, Nick, because between you and me, I don't know yeah. Go or what it means to even say install or build. Build, I kind of guess, but what does install do? Yeah. Like in in JavaScript world where I'm coming from, install yeah. means you're going to be installing all the missing packages, right? So, yeah. what does it mean in Go land? So, as far as I know, the only thing it does is it installs it into your path. A built uh, binary file, um, so that way you can just use it from your C your command line fresh out of the box there. Um, but it could be doing some more magic. I don't, I don't think so, but it could be. Okay. Uh, but yeah, uh, we have Lucas saying just say go with the go build instead of go install. Okay, let's do it. Lucas hasn't failed me in the past, so this Lucas is good. Lucas seems like a seasoned Go developer. He is. He's the one that suggested this topic, and he's he's sticking with it. He is definitely helping out here. Thank you, Lucas. All right, um, let's do it. Uh, so I need the full path of Go here because I don't have it in my path. Here it is, and we're gonna do build. And this is the thing that takes a while, right? Uh, yes, because Hugo is not a small project, uh, like uh, just a little app that you make yourself. Uh, how, this is how long is this gonna take? This is legit. Uh, I don't, like I said, I think I think I remember it taking a few minutes on my computer. Um, but I mean, I'm using an ancient i7 processor computer, so it's uh, both of yours are probably a million times better than mine ever were. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll see. I mean, right now, uh, I did start the build process a little bit later, like a couple of seconds later, on the Intel box, and yeah. this one is already showing some output. It's downloading some stuff, which means to me that this is actually going to compete a little bit for network resources, especially because we got a Zoom call. We've got, oh my Wait, God, it's done. Is, yeah. It's it's actually done on the M1. Yeah. All right. So they're, they're competing a little bit for downloading time. Is there a way to- well, run it run it again. I don't think it'll, I don't think it'll try to download the dependencies again uh, because they should, they should persist um, um, to be used again. Okay, there, it's gonna cache all the dependencies locally, yeah. and then when I build again, it's gonna. Okay, I see. Yeah, just just for the sake of sanity, remove the binary file that was created and, and try it again. Okay, all right, good. So let's take a look at what we've got here, and I should remove the Hugo binary. That one. Yeah, yeah, whatever was just created. I hope that's the one that was think, created. Yeah, it should be the only one that was created. 
Okay, let's remove that one. And let's go yeah. back here and do the same thing. And this time I'm gonna do uh, the following. I'm actually gonna time yeah. it so that we can see the time output. And I'm gonna do this one and at a time just in case it does want to download stuff. Yeah. I don't, so. I don't think, yeah. There you go. So most of it was spent uh, um, downloading last time. So it looks like it was done, right? This thing took two seconds to build. Yeah, so most of your time was spent downloading. That is crazy. What? So what's the other one? All right, and the other one. Let's let's do that. Um, time, go build. I mean, it's probably going to be the same. Yeah, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> it's it's pretty close, right? We've got two point four three five on the M one, two point four three nine on the Intel. I mean, this is really, <laughs> really fast. It's insanely yeah. fast, right? And I got another, another test for you too, after this. Okay, I'm happy to hear that. But there's pretty much no difference between the Intel yeah. box and the M1 box, which is amazing because, you know, like I said, this box is four grand, this box is 1200 bucks. If you need to build gold projects, I mean, you you have the same results on both of them, which is pretty crazy. Yeah. So I think a common task that uh, Go developers um, tend to face is when they release their their project, they need to compile for X number of uh, computers, right? They need to create a build for Windows, a build for Mac, a build for other Mac processors, <laughs> etc. So I think another test that we could do is we could try to do a cross compile from each of the machines. Mm -hmm. And and see what that uh, that yields as far as a result. Um, so I'll walk you through it <coughs> to, to cross compile. Um, just pick pick whichever whichever computer you want to start with. Okay, let's go with Eeny Meeny Miny Mo. This one. All right, show the screen. Uh, this is your Intel, right? The Intel box, yes. Yeah. So go ahead and type. Uh, uh, we're gonna say ENV space. ENV space. And then go arc. One word. Uh, yeah, capital. So basically, what we're doing is we're setting a flag. It, you you've done this in the past by saying export and then the param like your your go proc, right? It's the same thing. We're just doing it all in one. Uh, so go arc for go architecture, and we're going to set that to ARM uh, because we're going to compile for um, hopefully the M1, right? You said it was what ARM sixty four. Yeah, ARM sixty four. So I gotta figure out what the ARM versions are. Um, one second. I don't know. I'm off the top of my head. All right. Nick's looking stuff up, folks. Yeah. In the meantime, let's see what do we got here in the comments. Um, Lucas says Rob Pike and Co were frustrated with C++ building times, and with the language frustrations of Java. And what I'm guessing they switched to Go. Um, Gopal Verma says uh -huh. giveaway rules. Uh, yeah, we're going to do a giveaway at the end of this. Um, uh, so stay tuned for that, for the information on that. And, ah, go arch with a, with an oh, H. Oh, we forgot. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I'm just looking to see what the what we're looking for. All right, so it looks like we can just say uh, go arch equals arm64 and uh, then type in go build after, like, all in the same line. And Lucas suggested we do an export. What do you think about yeah, doing that? Yeah, we do that. Yeah, say arm arm 64 lowercase. A R M 64. Okay. Um and, and then uh go ahead and say go build. So this is going to cross compile this for the arm architecture. Uh yeah, so instead of building a build for your Intel, it you're building a build for your your other architecture. And this export, is it going to be global now? So anywhere I build a Go project, it's going to use the ARM uh, version? or Yeah, it, until your uh, environment session ends, probably when you restart your computer, since I don't think export persists it when you reboot, right? It's probably terminal-based, right? Yeah. All right, so... Oh, so that was, that was 20 seconds. So that seemed like it was longer. Much longer. Um, 10 times did longer. Did it download anything? Sorry, what? 
It didn't download anything, right? It didn't download anything. It used all, all the right. same dependencies. Um, all right, yeah. So then I guess on the other computer, do the same thing, but this time around, we want to do it for uh, AMD 64, right? So go Arch. Uh, yeah. AMD 64. And yeah. let's do the build here. And I don't, I don't know if this is a good test, but I, I figure in theory, um, people don't want to be hassled with waiting 10 hours. It'll never probably be 10 hours to go, but they don't want to wait a long time building for all of their different architectures. No, I don't want to do that. I don't want to wait. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody want to wait? Raise your hand no. in the comments. Nobody wants to wait. I mean, you, you you do so much native script that you 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 know how it goes building for Android and iOS. You oh, I know. You want the experience to be pleasant. I know. I I, I have to wait. I mean, I, anytime you build for, especially Android, I think it just takes a long time every time you have to rebuild. Oh, there's another contender. Building 4x86. Sure. Yeah, I mean, there's also, yeah, that's Windows, right? No. Well, that's the... What is x86? Uh, that's the 32-bit platform. The old, old school one. That's still a thing? It's still a thing. All right. It still happens. <laughs> All right, so look at this. We got 14.5 seconds here for this one. Yeah. And I, I wouldn't get too married to the, the results here because... I don't know. Maybe M1 in gen that particular architecture in general takes longer. I, who knows? There could be other factors um, that are contributing, but it's an, it'll give you an idea. Uh, I mean, it's it's telling me that I'm not losing a huge deal by getting an M1 Mac here, and I'm gonna yeah. not spend as much money as getting one of these boxes. Less than half the price. Yeah. Anyway, I'm not selling uh, MacBooks here, and this is just tests. These are my own personal machines, and nobody's yeah. paying me. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, let's try this uh, idea of building for x86 too, just for completion's yeah. sake. Yeah, mm. Lucas is saying x86 is uh, Go Architecture 386. If you want to, yeah, all right, you already got it. Let's do that. <laughs> uh. Unsupported. Uh, ooh, interesting. Um, I don't know much about that. Oh, maybe you have to specify an operating system with it. Interesting. Okay. There's maybe there's no Darwin 386, but maybe there's a Windows 386. So, um, let's go ahead and say export Go OS, and maybe specify. Um, yeah, Windows. Okay, that well, works. Let's, let's see. Hey, it's it's doing oh, it. It's, it's downloading. Oh, it's got to download. It figured something stuff. out. Yeah, probably. At least it does it for you. At least it, you don't have to go go on a search for all of these other dependencies to make it happen. Okay, fourteen and a half. So about the same. That's amount because of, time. of the download. Let's try. That's to because it had again. to download stuff. That's true. So let's delete uh, Hugo. Just in case, just to. It Try probably doesn't matter. Build it one more time. Hmm. Uh, my Levan is asking what we're building. We're just we're just uh, doing a, a benchmark on what it takes to build different things with Go on between a, an M1 Mac and a, an Intel Mac. Yeah. Souped up Intel Mac. And in the, this case, we're we're building Hugo, which is a open source project mm -hmm. building Go may not be the the largest project out there but at least it's not something incredibly tiny it's given us a decent test not a bad test i mean it's a real world test right in this case so yeah. it's better than a benchmark benchmarks are good but this is a real world test which people appreciate also um yeah. i'm not sure why i'm not able to clear out hugo and rebuild it uh, oh because it's an exe dot exe um oh because it's Windows. Tricked you. <laughs> wow, you got me. You got me. All right. <laughs> Let's do that again. <laughs> Still 1.45 seconds? Come on. That can't be right. It could be. I I don't know. I don't Everything I've ever done with Hugo has been fast. 
that is not Hugo Ingo. That's crazy. Ingo, that is, sorry. That is crazy if it's 1.4 seconds. I'm not used to waiting around when it comes to Go. Well, I mean, this thing seems like a really fast language, and it's making me want to learn it. And it probably well, is not that hard. Since you're... Uh... Since you're fresh to, to Go in general, maybe before you learn it, you do a, a comparison of, of Rust and Go coming from a clean slate. That would be worthwhile, I think. Yeah, like a, a fresh brain look at both of those and just do a... Yeah, where you're not tainted. When from, was the last uh, time learning opinion. two languages at the same time worked well for you? Never. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, folks, uh, this is pretty interesting. Uh, I mean, we're not getting definitive results here. All we're seeing is that building on these machines is pretty much the same as far as speed goes. Uh, I'm not seeing a huge push on one of these machines versus another one, even with 16 cores on the Intel box versus eight on the M1 box. But I am curious when I when the new Macs do arrive, uh, the M2s or whatnot, I'm gonna grab one of those and do some more testing, especially with Go and see if that's going to make a killing. I don't know. We'll see. So, Have you uh, done any kind of tests with Java? I have not done Java yet, and that's a pretty popular one. I've had a lot of requests for Java. Might need to... Yeah, considering I'm used to it taking uh, 10 minutes sometimes to build something. <laughs> that might be that might be the way to go then. That might be a good benchmark right <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah, you never know. All right, Doctoral says, we spent money to get heavy hardware for speed not for waiting indeed moses says thank you uh thanks for youtube to recommend this video lol i'm a novice go programmer hey we got a go programmer right here nice youtube recommended the correct video to you appreciate it thanks youtube <laughs> i don't think we did any programming though we just did a lot of building that's true no programming but at least maybe this will give you an idea of uh how long builds take which is what we're trying to do. I think that's pretty much it, right? Yeah, that's yeah, that's kinda. really that's kind of all we wanted to do today. Keep it nice and short today. I really appreciate. It. This is the first time I've had a guest on a live stream today uh, in, on this channel, so this is pretty cool, and it's actually working. Everything is working. The sound is working. The video is working. Thank you so much, Nick. Thanks for bringing your knowledge. Yeah. I really hope to have you back. Yeah, for sure, man. You said uh, you want me back for some uh, Unity stuff, right? I do. Yeah, Unity is a popular right. one, and a lot of people ask about it. So we'll do it again. Sweet. Thanks so much, folks. And uh, about that giveaway. Okay, so let's talk about that. Um, hang on a second, Nick. I'm just going to talk about that. And yeah, no, I want to hear about it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we're going to be giving away. I'm going to pick two winners tomorrow. One is going to be a license of Parallels, and one is going to be a license of JetBrains. JetBrains and Parallels both gave me some licenses to give off to you folks. So that's what we're doing. And uh, what I'm going to do is pick a random comment from the comments below this video. Once this video ends, once the live stream ends, there's going to be a comment section down below. It might be up already. I don't know. Leave a comment down there. Um, why leave a comment it helps the youtube algorithm find uh, this video and helps other people find the video it just brings it up in the youtube algorithm i don't know how it works i don't know about the algorithm but i heard it helps and i'm trying to grow my channel so that's what we're doing thank you so much folks i'll pick a winner t tomorrow yeah tomorrow in 24 hours i'm going to pick a winner uh two winners one for parallels one for one for jet brains and Thank you for everybody that helped out. Big thanks to Lucas for uh, suggesting the topic. And everybody, I'll see you all next time. Thanks for showing up. Bye.